very good morning. <coughs> Sorry for the late start of this seminar. Uh, today's seminar will be presented by Dr. Francisco Prada. He's an in-house uh, professor here. Uh, he works mainly in cosmology and in instrumentation, right? And he will uh, talk about the mirror slicer array for astronomical transients, a new integral field spectroscopy mode for OSIRIS at the uh, Grand Tecan Telescope. So, okay. uh, also, hi to a well remote uh, audience. Uh, so, the idea behind the project is coming um, uh, towards uh, finding a niche of opportunity at uh, GTC, at least that, that was my idea, with existing instruments in the framework of uh, cosmology. So, uh, so this is a, a picture, a, a wide-angle picture of, of uh, Grand Tecan, of GTC, and OSIRIS, which is uh, the instrument that we will be talking about. It's an instrument very much used uh, at the telescope for more than 10 years now. I guess many of you have used it. And it's becoming a bit old. That doesn't mean anything. We all know instruments like ISIS at the William Herschel that has uh, 30 years and still <laughs> producing many, many papers. So it's a nice spectrograph that allows one to invent uh, new uh, observing uh, modes, new features, right? So this is a series now, okay, which is uh, at the NASMIT platform, which never was its um, original place. It was mounted there, uh, still there. Uh, by 2021, early 2021, will be moved to uh, the Cassegrain uh, focus, and also they will um, replace uh, the CCD. So that means that there are some uh, rejuvenation uh, of Osiris, uh, but because you win throughput by the fact that you don't have M3 mirror anymore, right? That's 10% throughput just by moving from one focus to the other. And also because the CCD is uh, very much uh, efficient in the, in the blue. But the rejuvenation in our view is more towards the fact that having an integral field uh, unit or an integral field spectroscopy mode will make possible to lead uh, 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 an aspect of time domain astrophysics in, uh, in this decade. So, um, um, so this is the title abstract of the proposal that we have submitted to the GTC director and the steering committee uh, for the meeting they had on uh, last week, uh, January 2021. 20, and actually, I'm going to submit uh, or send, is better term, this afternoon, um, copy of this report to the uh, user committee, which I, I think is going to meet on <coughs> February 10 and 11, because I think it's very important to have their uh, opinion as well. And the reason to give this talk is to allow the community to know more about this initiative. So uh, first of all, it would have been impossible to do this work without convincing a number of people to work on the project, and, uh, um, and uh, we'll come back to them. But most important also, um, uh, having the help and support from the GTC office, without which this work would have been impossible. Uh, they did uh, terrific work on uh, doing um, the um, envelope uh, mechanical study interfaces, as we will see and also providing many documentation, feedback, and so it was really, really nice to work with them. Uh, in our team, we have astronomers uh, who are experts on cosmology and time domain astrophysics, as well as on 3D um, spectroscopy for extragalactic astronomy, instrumentation, and we have uh, engineers, in particular Robert Contant, who is a world expert uh, 
optical scientist uh, who invented very much the concept of uh, advanced slicers for, uh, actually he did this, the, the design of Muse, uh, among other projects. Um, we also had help of Ernesto who did the implementation of the Osiris uh, Grisms and VPH in ZMAX, and also the weight light system feedback who built uh, um, the Muse uh, uh, optics, a slicer, um, and among many other spectrographs. So, um, so the idea here is uh, what what MAP will do, right? So, so in, in uh, many regards, MAP is a conventional nowadays uh, eye view based on a mirror slicer, right? So this is the core of the of the instrument of the model that will be inserted in Osiris, as we will see later. So what the, what the stack of mirrors, uh, this is the one built uh, for Keck uh, instrument, but ours will be very, mu very much the same. Uh, we will have 33 uh, uh, slicers um, uh, tilted in the right uh, way. Uh, each slicer will have um, width of 0.3 seconds on the sky, 0.8 millimeters. So that will split the light uh, on the sky and send it to different mirrors to form a pseudo slit. So in many ways, after the pseudo slit is formed, the light will go through Osiris and Osiris will never know what, what, what the light is coming from. It will believe that it's coming from a standard long slit observation as it's doing every night. So we will see later. So this is a composed uh, image and simulations by, my, by, by Enrique Perez here. Uh, this is a region, um, well, this is the very famous local galaxy and GC 300. And uh, if you focus on, uh, this is very nearby, so it can be very well resolved. And if you focus on some particular regions, you have a H2 region here. And this is images from HST, I presume. Uh, and this is a supernova remnant. So what he has done is uh, how the slicer, our slicer will see those particular regions. Okay? And that's an image, composed image, from the, from the slicer. So this is 10 R seconds by 14 R seconds, which is the field of view of, uh, of MAT uh, at the GTC, with a sampling of 0.3 R seconds. So uh, uh, for each, uh, you see the stripes, right? So each of, uh, each of these stripes is one of those slicers. So what you have is an you decompose the image on 33 uh, stripes of uh, uh, 0 0.3 by 14 R seconds, basically, and take a spectra of it with Osiris. That's, that's the whole idea behind. So uh, these objects look like this. So this is already, uh, this is simulated data uh, using a Muse. So uh, you take a Muse data cube from raw data, and then you do the proper convolutions, uh, topology changes and uh, to produce a, a MAT data cube. Uh, it, we have to say that uh, Osiris can see bluer than uh, Muse. We will see that, and that's why it's very relevant. Although here we are limited by the Muse uh, limited money, uh, a, a small uh, wa uh, blue um, wavelengths. So, so this is uh, each of the uh, slicers. Right, it's lice, sorry, so 33. So you see each of them. And they have been arranged according to a CCD pixel and the wavelengths, okay? So if we blew out uh, it's two regions of supernova, you can clearly see for each slice, this one, this particular one, whatever it is, you can see the alpha nitrogen and sulfur two lines. And this corresponds to the R1000 R uh, grism of Osiris. So, so it's a real simulation, end-to-end -end simulation. So this is basically what we want to do. Have the capability of performing integral field spectroscopy with Osiris at the GTC. 
having the capability of doing sea-limited observations, um, broadband coverage, which is unique uh, for GTC, and as we will see for many other telescopes. Oops. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So the basic parameters uh, are here in the table. So, uh, um, so CITES uh, uh, is the spectrograph, and MAT will be considered as a box, as a model that will be inserted in the mask uh, cartridge or jukebox. Uh, it will provide uh, integral field um, spectroscopy. Field of view is 14.2 by 10 <coughs> seconds. Uh, the slit width is 0 0.303, which is basically the slice width of the mirrors. Uh, that the spatial sampling is 0 0.303 by 0 0.127, uh, which is the pixel size of Osiris on the CCD for 15 microns. You can beam if you want and then get uh, 0.3 by 0.25 are seconds. Uh, the wavelength range is the Osiris wavelength range from 360 to 1,000 nanometers. Spectral resolution, uh, it's higher than Osiris, and that's a very important fact here, is that because uh, we have a narrower slit, which is 0.3 are second, as compared to the typical standard 0.6 are seconds or even one are second that people use, we will enhance the resolution, the resolving power, by uh, 1.6 times uh, compared to the 0.6 arc second slit. And that's very, very powerful, as we will see later. So we will use the new detector, and, uh, and this is the footprint on the sky, as we saw before. There is a little vignette in here, only very little area, which is due to, uh, 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 to the collimator structure, uh, which is very well present in the Osiris long slit and imaging modes. So uh, GTC in the era of time domain astrophysics. Uh, this is the, the science framework, OK? So uh, to, to position ourselves. Uh, so there will be many, many imaging surveys, as we all know. So we have um, LSST as a prototype of uh, time variability astronomy. And, uh, but there are many others, like ZTF and many others, also in radio, and gamma rays, we will see later. So uh, we all know that in this business of time domain astronomy, uh, imaging is fundamental, it's essential. This is how you find the sources. Uh, just because you take imaging through several epochs. Uh, but uh, one uh, needs uh, identification of the nature of the sources, uh, especially for those rare transients, most interesting ones, at least for each person, uh, and also their environment. Uh, for that, both the identification and uh, uh, characterization and environment, one needs a spectroscopic uh, follow-up uh, with a great collecting power, which means 10 meter telescopes uh, for many reasons. You can do, of course, with very, very small, tiny telescopes. All dep it depends on the problem, as we will see later. So there are tons of science topics. This uh, uh, core diagram is very interesting uh, that uh, basically name all working groups of the LSST collaboration and how they cross over and how they interact. But you can go from uh, microlensing to magnetic active stars, supernova, galactic, it's all astrophysics involved here. So synergies, uh, this is a map, a road map. Well, it's not a road map, it's present map because <laughs> many of these uh, uh, instruments or space missions are taking data already. So, so this is uh, uh, plotted uh, from X-rays, high energies, to uh, radio, and in black you see the gravitational waves, which is the main interest of our group on, on this project. So, uh, so you have uh, X-rays 
Irosita, Athena, Gamma Rays, Magic CTA. Uh, uh, so this is Osiris plus Matt. So we hope to, if approved, our proposal to go to the telescope by late 2021. And uh, we stop here uh, because, uh, well, we don't know if there will be a new instrument or not uh, that will replace Osiris. Uh, LSST is starting very, very soon, end of 2021. It's really amazing how soon, so we will be right on time. And uh, there are other interesting, like go to La Palma, that is an all sky imager, all the PFS, JPAS, DESI. So this is not only uh, synergies for uh, time variability astronomy. So it's very important to remark that uh, the, the math uh, uh, top level requirements um, uh, allow a broad use uh, for the GTC community. So uh, regardless uh, the specific interest of the proposers, of the group who is proposing this uh, mode, uh, we are very positive that the instrument could benefit uh, the entire community. And as an example, uh, this is a simulation that Enrique did for uh, a famous uh, low metallicity dwarf galaxy nearby is Wiki W40. Uh, this is the Muse image, which is one minute by one minute. It's very large, of course. <coughs> and with, uh, with uh, math, you get 10 seconds by 14, which is actually quite decent and allows you to study the nucleus in very much detail. Okay? And you are uh, limited by scene, so you can get as good as the scene provides you in terms of, uh, of uh, spatial resolution. And most, um, very important, it provides you a very broad spectral coverage uh, with a very good resolution, thanks to the enhancement also of the slicer in the resolution. So you can also do Lyman Alpha galaxies at Redshift 4, 2, 3, 5, 6. And that's unique because there's no uh, such a possibility if you want to sample the scene well uh, and have very high resolution at the GTC for 2D spectroscopy. So MAT plays B. Um, so these are the only four, or the, it will be the only four uh, imaging uh, um, IFUs uh, in the north and south hemispheres. So uh, we have, of course, the very famous MUSE, which has been, and it is remarkable, uh, the quality of data that it provides. We have uh, at Keck, uh, the Keck Cosmic Web uh, Imager that has been designed specifically for Lyman Alpha blobs at high redshift. And uh, we have a Gemini, an IFU, um, uh, with a small, uh, very small uh, field of view, five by five almost at a second. Uh, but it's remarkable that the, the instrument was built actually by Robert Contant and Graham Murray at Durham uh, more than 20 years, 20 years ago, and still is providing many papers. And they have one in the north, one in the south. And in the north, uh, if, if everything goes well, we will have Osiris plus Matt that will provide uh, the widest spectral coverage uh, with a, a low and moderate resolution, up to 4,000, right? And very good spatial sampling. Uh, the field of view is similar, not that very different from CAC. It's much bigger than Gemini. And this is ours is based on mirror slicer as uh, VLT and CAC. Uh, the, the Gemini uh, eye view is based on uh, uh, optical fibers. Okay. So uh, it is uh, very important that the proposed eye view present uh, very unique opportunities to compete and play a major role uh, in the domain uh, of uh, transient astronomy, but also in, uh, for the whole community. So this is just at glance our interest on the project of the group that is proposing the, the project. Uh, I could develop each case, uh, uh, of course, in detail. Uh, but let me here mention our interest and just a couple of figures to highlight the importance of this project. So it's true that 
uh, and it's true, as we saw from LSSD uh, overview of the dom of time domain astronomy, that the potential of math, of math, science potential of math, is essentially unlimited. So you can do and cover all fields of astronomy. Uh, however, our team in particular, science team, uh, where we have, um, uh, we had the help of uh, Enrique Perez here, Luca Itza, who was a former postdoc, now he's Copenhagen in dark, and Ariel Gobar, who is at Stockholm University. So we are focusing on a selected of outstanding science topics uh, that uh, uh, are in our areas of expertise, namely, uh, basically, identification and characterization of electromagnetic wa um, uh, gravitational wave counterparts, time delay uh, measurements of uh, strong line supernova and quasars, and also exploration of the host environments of supernova to see um, uh, systematics on the Hubble constant uh, determination. And in fact, the purpose behind this program is to measure the Hubble constant uh, as precise as we can and also understanding systematics and, and many other interesting uh, facts. Uh, here you can see uh, the MUSE uh, imaging of, uh, of the only kilonova found so far. Uh, it covered the entire galaxy because the big field of view. We will cover a little fraction, but still we will be able to get uh, estimates of the extinction and age of the host galaxy. That's, that's a very important thing that you cannot do uh, with the longest slit, as well as we will be able to do uh, spectrophotometry, as we will see now, that you cannot do with longest slit. So it's very important here also to address the question that this is the spectra taking, uh, taken uh, with X shooter uh, for the kilonova. Uh, so that's the time uh, evolution of the spectra. And here in red, this is how MUSE uh, the spectral range covered by MUSE, and this is the spectral coverage uh, um, that we will get with MAT at GTC. So we go much bluer, we go uh, bluer than the 4,800 Armstrong. So, so in fact, MAT, uh, sorry, MUSE is blind below almost 5,000 Armstrong. So, but with, uh, <coughs> with Osiris and MAT, we can go down to 360 nanometers, 3, 360. So also for general physics, we can go to the Balmer break, which MUSE cannot do. And that's fundamental for many, many other projects. Uh, this is a study of uh, strong uh, uh, quasar lens, in this case, that is being used uh, very successfully to determine the Hubble constant. Uh, there is a big disagreement now between the CMB and the uh, high redshift survey probes on H0 compared to supernova and also to compare to uh, these uh, strong lengths. Uh, so people are trying to understand systematics and try to solve this, uh, this question, which is very exciting nowadays. So, so this is our main goal. So this is the simulation uh, of, of MAT, uh, how MAT will see the kilonova. So we took, the, again, uh, the MUSE data, which is this one. Uh, if we see the image, image reconstructed by MAT, this is what we will see, 10 by 14 Earth seconds, with the spatial sampling of 0.3 Earth seconds, and you see the spectra, right? So you see for each slice, uh, we have all this spectral coverage, and you see the 33 slices. And this is flash calibrated, so everything is like you will see in your, uh, in your, um, the, in your data. So you see here the gradient uh, of the galaxy itself, of the elliptical galaxy, that's what shows this uh, contrast, and these lines are the kilonova, the object. So it's very important, remarkable uh, thing to say that because you have the 2D information, you can collect all the light from the kilonova to build the light curves, which is not the case of a long slit. And therefore, you can perform a spectrophotometry in general, not only for this project. Plus, you gain in throughput uh, quite a bit if your thing is good because you pick up all the light. So uh, that's an overview of the instrument uh, characteristics, also of the science context where the instrument will be. 
And now we will uh, give uh, an overview of the, of the instrument itself, of the characteristics and the, and the challenges. So, um, so this is um, uh, the beginning of, of everything, of our study. Uh, likely, um, we spent more time uh, um, on the optical study of Osiris itself, <laughs> uh, try to understand the imaging uh, spectroscopy capabilities from the ZMAX file, from the optical uh, model. Uh, that's uh, work that did Robert, and that was fundamental in order to think about the, the concept for the IFU and the imaging slicer. And also GTC spent a lot of time to understand the envelope of a mat, to make sure about the dimensions, to make sure that it will fit in Osiris, to, uh, the interfaces, so and between all of us, uh, we were working together uh, for the last, uh, uh, since September, I would say. So uh, we had to implement, this was done by Ernesto Sanchez Blanco, the, all the uh, Grisms and VPH of Osiris in ZMAX, that was also part of the, of the study we had to do in order, before starting the, the concept of this, of this laser. We also, Robert in particular, spent a lot of time understanding uh, the, the, the <coughs> comparison between the ZMAX model as provided in a file compared to the real spectrograph. As you can see, there is a well, very well-known vignette in, uh, in, uh, due to the collimator uh, support. Uh, the GTC also helped us a lot to understand <coughs> many, sorry, many different aspects of the correspondence between the mask, uh, of a mask of Osiris, long slit mask, or multi-object mask, uh, compared to the CCD. So basically the correspondence between the focal plane of Osiris and the focal plane on, this, on the CCD. Uh, so the, uh, Osiris is designed in such a way that the telescope doesn't, con con doesn't, coincide, uh, doesn't agree in the position with the optical axis of the instrument. So this is the optical axis of Osiris. This is the optical axis of the UTC. So a lot of work was done to understand this. OK, here are the results, uh, general uh, results for the spectrograph, and then concrete proposal for the IFU. So regarding the basic parameters, we saw this table before. I want to highlight um, uh, basically three of them. Uh, the fact that uh, we will go to the Cassegrain, as I said, that has a direct impact, not only for MAT, for all the Osiris modes that will allow to gain 10% due to the fact that the M3 mirror that sends the light now to the NASMIT will be removed. So the light goes straight from the primary to the secondary and then to the Cassegrain focus. So uh, the slit width, uh, the fact that uh, that our slice uh, width uh, is uh, 0.3 R seconds translates right away in a better uh, spectral resolution. So this is a PSF uh, done by a study. Uh, it's a, it's a, a preliminary study where he compares the, uh, uh, the MAT uh, uh, PSF with the Osiris uh, 0.6 R seconds slit. And if I recall well, well, the words should be the slit, long slit. So, so uh, yeah. So the a slice is the green. So that's the matte slice, and the side is long slit. Uh, is is the is the red? Okay. So you can see that it's much narrower. So which means that uh, that uh, it projects on less number of of pixels. So therefore, the resolution is uh, is higher by 60%, and the uh, blue is basically the Osiris aberrations due to the optics and all that. So, so we have, uh, just by argument, simple argument, the Fourier transform of a narrow slit always provides you higher spectral resolution. Uh, but of course, you need to go into the system and see precisely how much you win. So, uh, and that translates into this table, okay? <laughs> An important fact is that 
many of the simulations, most of it, and uh, magnitude limits, uh, magnitude limits, and etc. We did it for the R1000B and R1000R because are the the, the reasons that are more interesting to us for the uh, science cases that would be for. But you can use math with all the collection of reasons and VPH. Okay. So uh, and this is the resolution. Uh, and in brackets, you see the resolution for the long slit, uh, for 0 0.6 arc second long slit. And there is a big increase. So for example, if you want high resolving power, what used to be uh, 2,500, now is 4,000. Okay. And that's really, really cute because you can do a very nice intermediate resolution studies with a C limited, which is not possible uh, in, uh, in uh, GTC now, in uh, two dimensions. Okay? So and then the CCD, uh, I think you can guess which one is which. So, so the red is the new E2B, uh, and the blue is the current Marconi which uh, is very low, uh, has very low efficiency in the blue, but not only that, it's not monolithic 4K by 4K, it has a gap in the middle, as you saw uh, previously, so that will be removed. So, but it's very important to see that uh, the increase is a factor of two <laughs> at uh, 4,000 angstroms. So uh, when you get all these, and also our design for the slicer, yeah, you will see later the concept. You take everything into account. You can do this exercise, uh, estimate. This is the efficiency, total throughput, assuming uh, the telescope, the atmosphere, and the instrument. Uh, we did it for two grisms, uh, R1000B and R1000R, so the blue and red, uh, which basically are the two that provides you nice broad coverage with a good resolution. You can use, you can do the same exercise for many others. So uh, you can go to the current situation with Osiris, with the, which is uh, uh, now is the dotted line, okay, for the two. You can then go to the new situation for the same long slit, which is having the E2V detector and also the instrument in Cassegrain. And that's the, the dash. Okay. And then you have um, uh, the eye view, mat, which is the solid line. Okay. So the solid line is, of course, much better than the, the current situation because you have different gains. Uh, it's a bit smaller uh, than the, the throughput than the long slit will be uh, because we have more reflections. Because with the mirror slicer, when light goes, uh, light comes to the focal plane, we have six reflections in total due to the different mirrors that you will see now. But when you have the long slit, then it goes straight. Okay? This is why the coating of the mirrors is fundamental, so to get as high as possible. But still, still we can say, and I think it's fair to say, uh, because this, this has been built before. There are uh, these cake instrument mu, so we are going to build something that has been built before by the same company that this is a fair estimation. And if we compare this with the MUSE uh, uh, special time calculator, uh, the overall efficiency is very much the same. Uh, because uh, uh, there is a compensation due to the different aperture in the telescopes uh, and that, uh, that compensates with the lower throughput of Osiris. So MUSE spectrograph is more efficient, but we have a 10.4 meter as compared to an 8 meter. So then the two compensates, which is a factor of 30%, the two compensates, and then we get something similar. OK, so the limited magnitudes and fluxes. So this is uh, the Osiris uh, plus mat uh, in AB magnitude for one hour exposure, signal to noise of five as a function of wavelength. And uh, so this is uh, the blue and the red uh, grisms, uh, 1,000 grisms. And uh, you can see that you have very broad coverage. This, this used to be before going here and then coming down suddenly, so as now. Uh, with uh, Osiris plus Matt, 
and because the E2V and the, and the, and the Cassegrain, we will go really f very, we will have very high throughput in the very blue, okay? So, uh, and in the red, we can go very far, not only 9,000, we might even go to 10,000. So this is pretty good. It uh, <laughs> meets the, the requirements that we have. And then I have something very significant to say is uh, 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 just this, this plot that shows the clear advantage of having a, an IFU as compared to a long slit. So this is basically the flux is inside the slit uh, for a star, for a point source. You have a Gaussian or a Moffat PSF. So you observe with a slit of a given size, and then you compute the flux inside. And that's as a function of the ratio between the width of the slit and the seam. So for example, if you have a seam of 0 0.8 uh, seconds, which is typical at uh, GTC, it means that you are losing 20% of the light with the long slit. 20% uh, that you don't lose with the uh, IFU. You get all. And this is not included in the signal-to-noise estimates, okay? So that means that this signal-to-noise estimate will be enhanced by, by that if you sum up all the signal. But also, something very important, that if you go to bad scene conditions, then you start to <laughs> recover a lot of the light. Yeah? Uh, but that's not uh, all the only uh, nice aspect about having MAT on, on the GTC, is also that you can do absolute spectrophotometry. Because you have all the light of the source. And, and that's really, really fundamental. So finally, uh, limiting fluxes. Uh, this is uh, an estimate that we did based on the Muse VLT <coughs> calculator. And uh, so we, we, are, we are getting basically, for very, very deep exposure, uh, limiting flux of three times 10 to the minus 18. Um, and that's uh, basically, uh, if you want to observe, for example, these Lyman alpha blobs at a very high redshift. That's an example uh, how useful could be this instrument for other uh, programs as a complementary information. <coughs> Okay, so uh, this is the technical specifications. Uh, this is the work uh, um, that was done uh, by GTC mostly on regarding the mechanical and interfaces, and also combined with the work done with Robert for the um, optical envelope as well. So, so in the table you have optical parameters and and. Uh, a mechanical parameters which defines the optomechanics envelope of the of the instrument. So um, we have uh, uh, focal uh, uh, on the focal plane. Our pseudo slit will have, will be 400 millimeter long, uh, and that's how we will uh, uh, place the the different uh, slices uh, spectra. And then the space envelope is 40 by 40 by 10 uh, centimeter on the focal plane. And it shouldn't exceed the 10 kilograms. That's something we have to double check with some dummies. So this is a model of the cartridge. As you might know, uh, OSIRIS has the capability of doing multi-object spectroscopy uh, by means of uh, drilling a mask with a different up to 50 or 40 slits. Uh, you see one of the masks with the little slit here. So what, what it does, this motor, so it has two motors, one here and one there. So there is a motor that moves the, the, the uh, uh, cartridge uh, to locate the mask that you want in the right position. And then it has another motor that pulls the selected mask to place it uh, on the focal plane. Okay? So uh, that's a picture, a real picture where you have already a mask placed on the, on the focal plane, as now. And there are some uh, baffles, some interfaces that we are going to study more in detail. And so the idea is very uh, simple, and it has been uh, before uh, done at the Gemini, uh, GMOS IFU. So you build a, a box, and you replace a number of, of uh, slits, uh, by that box. So it's as simple as that. 
So it's basically the size, the vertical size of mat is uh, equivalent to six masks. So the, the cartridge can locate now 13 masks. So what we will do is to replace six of them, to, to, to remove six of them that can be removed any time, uh, and then place the, the mat box. And the mat box will have exactly the same interfaces, the same, exactly the same frame, and, and it will work in the same way. So to the user and the astronomer, they, they don't know that they are using math. Basically, they take mask uh, number, whatever, right? So this is a realization, very realistic uh, realization of, uh, of the math model of the box that goes into the cartridge. So this is done by, uh, by the GTC staff. And uh, you see that you can see here three components, OK? This is to the envelope study, OK? So you have the frame, which here is exactly the same frame that is used to place the multi-object masks or the slit masks. Instead of being empty, as here, uh, for a real slit uh, mask of Osiris or Moss, you will have here the, the mask. OK? So and then you have some space below, 10 centimeters below a box that you can place your optics for the IFU, and a little space above. Okay? So the light is coming from the telescope here. So you have a little hole there with a mirror that will pick up the light uh, and will send it to the relevant optics, to the slicer. And below, you will have slit, like a long slit of 400 millimeter to allow the light to go to the spectrograph. Okay? The specific details will be developed later. So uh, here you see uh, it's hard to see with these colors, but this is a 2D drawing of the box uh, that we took into account for the developing the concept of the of the slicer of the of the optical system. So we had to take into account uh, all the dimensions uh, very much in detail to make sure that all the optical elements will fit into the box. Okay, so that's very nice work uh, they did at GTC, as well as to make sure all interfaces are correct and all that. Not only that, uh, they had the initiative to do um, to print in 3D some pieces that will represent the uh, the box. Uh, so they took a frame, uh, a real a real uh, that's a model, but that's the real one. They took the frame of the current mask, which is also a fr the frame format, and they uh, mimic what will be uh, the uh, matte model uh, by having these pieces to make sure that this can fit in in the, cart in the cartridge of Osiris. And indeed, so they completed the test. I don't know if you can see it from the back, but this is a picture taken uh, at the GTC cartridge, so you can see uh, one, two, three uh, masks already there. And then this is the space for mat, which is equivalent to six uh, masks. And you see there that it fits well and doesn't hit with anything. So that was the test. So now there is a pending test that will be taking this uh, and place it on the focal plane to make sure that the concept is correct. So the optical uh, design, well, is a study. It's not a conceptual design yet, because you need to go farther in detail. But it's, a, it's an optical design done by Robert Contan, based on, uh, on his previous designs, uh, many he has done. And, uh, and, and basically, you see a view from Osiris. Okay? So you see that uh, how um, the Osiris, uh, and a, a person from Osiris will see the optics, okay? From the bottom, if you want. So this is the core of the instrument, which is the imaging slicer, okay? And that's a little mirror that you need uh, to pick up the light from the telescope. So the light comes from the telescope, uh, hits the fold mirror, that actually can be put anywhere, but it just was just put there. That's very little mirror, okay? So you, you need the image only in 10 by 14 or seconds, so your, your mirror is small. So the light goes to some uh, four optics 
that basically enlarge uh, the, the beam and do some corrections. Uh, this is two mirrors, or it might be made of uh, refractive optics, is something pending. And then goes to the slicer, and the slicer will uh, reflect the light to 33 mirrors. Okay? So here we see uh, we made the tracing for six uh, slicers at different positions, right? Uh, one sitting at the edge of the slit, another in the middle, one at the center, at the bottom, and another edge, even a little one that Robert did to, with some displacement <laughs> because the, the vignetting to make sure that he, because he wanted to win as much as space as possible. So. But that little one might cost you a fortune the, in the end. So, so the, the thing is that the light comes from the uh, telescope, hits the four optics, goes to the slicer, and then you focus yourself or, or one of them, right? So it goes to this re-imaging re mirror that sends the light to flat mirror that will send it to, the, to Osiris, right? And that's a view, uh, 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 of, uh, that's a different view of the optics layout uh, for each of the components. So it, it, in, in principle, it's simple. It has been done before. In practice, uh, it has to be properly studied. And we need to get also a cost evaluation from the company. Um, the good news is that uh, the slicer has been done. All the optical elements have been done before. And we now need to, to start working on the real design. So observing with math, it's very simple. So I'm finishing here. So uh, we propose that math will be a model permanently mounted on the series cartridge um, from late 2021, so that will allow to respond uh, to transient targets at any time, because it will be always there, right? and also the execution of standard uh, projects, normal proposals. Uh, but in principle, it can be removed as any other mask. So you can remove it from the cartridge at any time if, for example, you have um, a lot of demand of, multi of most uh, uh, slits. So uh, it does not require uh, any action from the GTC at a night or a day in terms of um, technical support. It's a box. There's no moving parts inside, nothing. Everything is fixed. So there's no uh, heat, and there's no cables, there's nothing. Only mirrors and mechanics right? supports, that's all. And no moving parts. So, uh, so no impact on the telescope operations. So overall, the procedure is very simple. So to make sure that the acquisition and centering of the telescope is right, so what you have to do is basically position the star, the target, at the center of the eye view peak of mirror. <laughs> That's something that is simple. Uh, the, the, er the pointing error of GTC is one a second RMS. So you will get that. But this can be improved uh, as they do with Megara and Emir Moss. Uh, and it can be applied to math in, in a way that the target positioning could be better than one spaxel. So, so we can get a positioning better than 0.3 R seconds. Okay, so uh, very important is the main advantage of math is that uh, you always get a broadband image. So you basically reconstruct the image. You take a spectra, but in fact you are reconstructing right away the image. Uh, once you reconstruct the image, uh, you do the 3D data cube, and then you can conf uh, confirm the correct target acquisition that of course will be always there, but you can uh, do focusing, you can improve focusing, but very important for transient, is that you don't care uh, about the uh, accuracy of the source. If uh, you get a report of a target with an error of three R seconds, that's, that's fine. So you just point the telescope, and you are sure that the, the target will be uh, on the field of view. So the instrument calibration uh, is the same that, uh, that the GTC provides for Osiris. There's nothing special. So just use, if you use a given Grissom or VPH, you just uh, um, do calibration lamps. The same for dark uh, bias. There's nothing special on that. And our aim is to provide a, a user man manual with all the uh, calibration and observing details, as well, as well as a public available 
uh, data reduction pipeline and a quick look pipeline for the support astronomers and the, and the observers. So let me finish with some concluding remarks. Uh, so I want to say uh, that the scientific and technical work presented in the proposal that has been uh, sent to the GTC steering committee uh, director for their consideration. Um, uh, based on that proposal, we could be in the position to formally start the project in April uh, this year, uh, with the aim that uh, the design and construction phase can be ended uh, by late of uh, 2021. Okay. So uh, this plan should fit well with the GTC plans of having OSIRIS installed uh, and ready for operation at the Cassegrain grain focus, including the, the new uh, E2V detectors. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Paco, for this uh, seminar. And it's open for questions. Really nice project, uh, Paco. I think I think this would be really really useful. I mean, for the kind of science that that we do, is 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 really great. I was wondering about the the budget and funding plan that you have for for the instrument, because if it's a, such a, a a short schedule, I guess that you have all that more or less settled already. Okay, so, uh, uh, cost of the whole project as a rough estimate because we don't have a detailed estimates until we don't complete the design, as you know. Including everything, hardware and manpower, is one million euro. Everything together. And beyond that, I, 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 I cannot say more, because I don't know. Uh, but uh, where, where is that funding coming from? Uh, from donors, from donors. Okay, so that's not yet. I understand. Okay. So that, that's part of our, uh, our aim, is to pick up uh, any interested uh, um, uh, partner institutions uh, 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 to support the, the project. More questions? The, the math box will be always in the uh, Osiris, uh, you know, device, or will be something changing? You can uh, change each other uh, uh, and changing the play, you know, the max. Uh. You, you can of course, it's possible. It's designed for that. Uh, our preference will be that uh, if there's no demand that will st for, for most, that will stay always there. So it's possible, but if there is a demand, for some project, it can be removed because it doesn't have any special. You know, my question is some kind of uh, a special recalibration or something like that when you move one or the other. No? Mm. Is is the same as you move uh, one long slit and put other. Or everything is fixed there. You can you have to do calibrations as you do for any other mode in Osiris, but nothing special. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Very easy. Uh, with the low resolution, with, with the spectral range that will you cover? Yes. <coughs> it's, it's the same than Osiris, it's, nothing is different. It's only, so you have the this 300B and R, so with a resolution of 500, so in the, with the blue you go from 3,600 3, to 7,200, and then 4,800 to 10,000 with, res, with resolution 500, which is already very good because it's increased. And you cannot go more because then you have a second order. Uh, so, so that's the very, very broad range. But the still resolution is not bad for many studies, 500. But actually, if you pay attention to the 500B, 
So you get the same spectral coverage, but with higher resolution, almost 1,000. Or even this one is much better. So the, the 1,000B, for example, is 3630 to uh, 7,500 with resolution of 1,500. So this is very close to the SDSS resolution, the 1000B, uh, from uh, very UV to beyond, uh, beyond uh, uh, H-alpha. And that's resolution 1500. More questions? Let me get again to the to the uh, project management. Uh, what would be the 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 division of the schedule that you foresee for the project? The yes. Uh, uh, Twenty months total. Yes. So one part of it would be design, and one part would be manufacturing. Uh, Six months to go to final design. So you, you could actually start the project before having the funding secured. Uh, uh, well, there's very little time for getting that funding secured. Yeah. So we need to. This is a is an opportunity, right? In because as you saw, the synergies is a very important opportunity in terms of what's going on around. Because the follow up of the LIGO, LIGO, and all that, right? I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I can give you a few size cases if you need. There's no prompt reaction by the community, by all of us. It doesn't make sense to build this. So, if this will take uh, two years, let's say, <laughs> yeah, fine, you can do it. Yeah. As, uh, and, uh, the idea is, my take on, on this is that. I, I, I ask uh, for a prompt reaction. Uh, of course, you cannot get all the funding in two months. <laughs> so, but uh, but we need uh, we need uh, some level of funding to keep uh, the the ball uh, running, as you said for the for the optical design, for example. The the optical design will be done by Robert Content. Uh, the rest of the the design work would that be produced, or or, or that, that will depend on some of the partners. That, that. Uh, many things. Uh, because we haven't got we haven't gone that far to be honest, okay. because uh, there are many uh, open questions, and we haven't gone that far. Okay. So if there is no more questions, we thank again the speaker. Thank you, Paco.